My name is Christopher Conley. I was born in St. Paul, Minnesota. I'm the fourth of seven children. I came to Miami in 1969 when I was five. My father got a job at Barry University and uh, grew up on Miami Shores. My parents had a baby every even year in the 60s and had one in 61. They had three in a row. And I'm a 64. I'm now 58. And we moved to Miami Shores. My dad taught at Barry for 40 years. Social worker. Amazing man. My mom was a home, you know, sergeant. And the seven kids and the seven days of the week and who did what and when. And uh, I never missed a day of school. Sickness was not in the equation. Uh, all of us excelled in different areas. And my forte was soccer. I went on to play at the University of North Carolina. And that's where I started smoking marijuana. And I lasted two years there. Came back, went to Barry University, a smaller place and more uh, restricted as far as missing class and whatnot as opposed, as opposed to a large university. And then I went and played pro in Jamaica. It was like the highlight of my career, you know, drinking red stripe and smoking weed. I was a white Rasta, Irish Jamaican, I used to say. I'm Irish in my blood and Jamaican in my mind. Anyway, then, you know, we tried freebasing. Sniffing cocaine lasted a moment and then we just needed something a little deeper. And it, we started smoking the cocaine, and that led to crack on the streets, and we'd lace our weed, led to can hits, which led to glass pipe. And uh, I've been at it on and off for about 35 years. And basically, it's a mess. You know. I've abused my friends, family, and uh, I've pissed on every opportunity I've had, which many are golden. My friends, they're amazing. Even now, they scare. You know, but I, like Proverbs 26:11, my friend says, "As a dog returns to his vomit, so too shall a fool return to his folly." And uh, I don't know. I just have to be honest with that. I'm out on the streets smoking crack all the time. And that's the priority, unfortunately. Do you ever see yourself getting clean? I, I yes, know. I've had times of clean, you know, a year here, six months there, you know, through since 88. But nothing significant. I mean, I always was like, I can do one, you know, I'll be all right. You know, I can handle it, maintain. It's not possible in my world. Like the progression of the illness minus total textbook drinking alcohol, leading to marijuana, to sniffing coke, to smoking coke. Thank God I'm not a big needle guy. I'd possibly do heroin. I tried it other ways, smoking and sniffing it, but it didn't, you know, everyone has their preference. So you've tried heroin? Yes, many moons ago. It really didn't phase me. You know, I just tried to smoke it on some aluminum foil chasing the dragon, so they said, and you know, it did nothing for me. You know, as far as, that rush, you know, or whatever it is that, you know, the euphoria that I perceive, that's all not well, you know, darkness. Basically. I would say many times it was just the repetition, you know, how do you say, dude? Did you just like, you were, you were sober yeah. for a period of time and you started to miss the feeling of being high? Not the feeling, but more just the environment, the, you know, the atmosphere and just the freedom of, you know, no responsibility and... So did, did you ever get married or have kids or anything? No, I've always, you know, one woman just like, it's me or the drugs, I'm like, bye. They didn't talk back to me. But. It's sad, but true. I'd say three possible, you know, moments that I could have, like the first love was probably the most beautiful. And so it almost sounds that you prefer this lifestyle than, than to clean up, is that? Unfortunately, 
Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, like the board, I don't know, like the, the chaos, like, I don't know. That's you interesting. Yeah. Like, you're, you're the first person I've talked to to say that most of the addicts that have told their stories say that they, they really want to get out, but uh, it's just... No, my spirit does. I, uh, like, last time I got clean, it was sort of like my man, physical man. It's like more in my spiritual man. It's like, stop, please, let me out. Because actually some people would be like, hey, if, why do you even smoke? You're gonna act like this. I mean, I was a mess, you know? And it's just the mental state of, you know, because lately I've had a couple, you know, run-ins with the law, which didn't last, you know, I have like 10 years without a problem, you know, other than panhandling, which is illegal, but yet they turn, you know, I'd rather ask to take, not that I haven't taken. And uh, it's, I'd also, to be honest, would love to be, you know, back in the light. And you know, it was quite beautiful because life was good to me when I was obedient. You know, and I'm very disobedient, and he still blesses me. But yet, nothing like the, you know, diamonds. Are you? Um a man of faith? Do you believe in God? Oh, definitely. Christ in 94, you know, I went to the altar. I'm not, I'm too cool for that, you know. But yet something within me, the spiritual man, was like, yeah, and Jesus, you know, like, just, I ponder many things, and I love hearing other viewpoints, you know. But uh, for me, you know, I don't know. I, we're going to live forever. We're just very young. I hope he knows me, you know? and lets me in, you know, that I, on the edge, like the fence, you know, we've got to be yes or no, you know? and uh, I'm definitely in the darkness, you know, you know. So you started with just smoking weed? Well, alcohol, you know, beer, drinking, heavily, you know, every night, there's something going on, you know. Would you say that you would, that, that you were pretty in control of that, or, and then? Oh, definitely, like, even early on in smoking, you know, because of being a social, you know, and I'd go to work and get paid on Thursday night and be broke Friday morning, you know, but that's when it got to the point where I'd miss work on, on a Friday, you know, because I was still going. And then it became a weekend, and then it became, you know, daily, then it became, I can't work eight hours, you know. And, th and at this point that you're talking is just alcohol and weed? Yes, and, and you know, we buy weed, I mean, we'd go buy our weed on the street, and yeah. then we'd get a couple rocks and laces, you know. We call them bazookas or geek joints, you know. And that's when, you know, and then it got into the can, you know. We started hitting it. And then when the glass, it was like a, you know, a bullet train, you know. And the way it's inhaled is very much more intense than a can or a joint is different high. But yeah, it's because the weed mellows out the paranoia, you know, or whatever's going on. Sometimes. I'm carefree and actually a little too nonchalant as opposed to being cautious. And now it's like when a w young woman, you know, might be your age, would say, I knew you as a little girl. I'm like, oh my God, I've been out here a long time, you know. It's, and it's scary. Where do, you, uh, where do you sleep at night? Wherever I choose, you know, like home is where the heart is. So I really, I don't know. My, you know, mentality is warped to too many, you know, but yet they seem to say, you know, okay, although I've done some dumb things you know, on the street, you know, which can be detrimental to my life, you know, I've been blessed to be alive and in some sort of mental state, like, there are some very sick people, you know, not that I'm well, but yet, you know, I try to be cordial. And, no, and that's just respect. I was brought up where a gentleman, you know, opens the door for a woman, you know. Here it's like, it's, language has changed. It's like, we didn't use, black is not something, you know, N-I-G-G-E-R was not allowed in our home. That is colorblind, you know. It's learned behavior, prejudice. And yeah. I'm so grateful. My parents, he met Alan L.K. I mean, my dad is a phenomenal man, you know. And if I could be an eighth of the man he is, I, I'd be doing all right. Are you in touch with any of your family? Not really. I mean, no. 
because Kathy, the oldest, is in California. Mary is around Hollywood. She's very, you know, bohemian. Then there's Kevin, who is my older brother, who paved the way for all my accolades. You know, I was Kevin Connolly's little brother playing ball. You know, and then I just happened to go to, you know, a camp where the ball bounced my way. You know, same with Jamaica. It's like they want to kill the white man. You know. Can you tell a little bit about your your soccer career? I actually, I played a lot of soccer. Um, I kind of stopped after high school, but I was super into it myself. Amen. No, and that was my first love. I, I played ball at shorts, that's all. You know, I played every sport, and then it's soccer. We started playing year-round at the recreation center. They believed in football, baseball, basketball, seasonal stuff. We played soccer year-round, and that's the beauty of South Florida as opposed to up north. I was Pareto American before we even started our season. You know, that's the political and stuff that goes on, you know, because of the summer before I'd done well in Colorado at the sports festival. You know, anyway, I remember my friends who are now phenomenal as far as wealth and being faithful. You know, they're like, what's the first thing you're going to say to Jesus? And I was like, where's the soccer field? Because that is the abundance of the heart and mouth sweet. And that's what my first love was. And I was like, wow, no out of bounds. You know, I just said it off the hook. That's what I do now. Like my sister would say, why don't you think before you speak sometimes? I, mean, just, I don't know. I'm, I'm like sometimes a Rolodex. I interrupt people terribly, you know, because if they take a breath and I'll slip in, you know, my friends, we all just talk over each other. Yet, I don't know. And then I went to Chapel Hill and, you know, there were some universities, you know, just because I played ball, maybe academically, I, you know, I, I was like a B student, you know, did all right, you know, like a 3 -0. you know, nothing superior, nothing detrimental, you know, like, and then like get thou on the SATs, you know, just all right. And I was drunk that day, I, I mean, the night before, we get crushed, you know, high school, I was very obedient, never smoked anything. Drank periodically at a party, you know, here and there, but didn't really care for it. I mean, alcohol, you know, just, and then get sick. It was just not my thing. So then I came home because I didn't go to school. I mean, I just partied so hard and, you know, had a phenomenal time with, yeah, you know, the women. It was like everywhere. You know, and playing sports was, you know, helpful in that environment. I also would like to just hear a little bit about when you went pro. So you went to Jamaica? Well, I just, the guy saw me play. And many times these guys that come to South Florida, and they're Ramon Mifflin, for example, played in Bolivia. You know, and played for the Cosmos. I know him because he was a world-class player. And yet, he can come to South Florida and not be noticed except by, you know, people from Peru or Bolivia, wherever. I want to say Bolivia. But anyway, and then they'd say, oh man, where'd you learn to play? And I'm like, Miami. They're like, no, no, where are you from? And it was just, we took to it and had great coaching, you know, and I don't know, I was like Pete Rose. I just, you know, wanted to help and never, you know, surrender. When you got on the team, like, when you went pro, did, did, they, did you get like a really big paycheck or no, anything? No, no, it was like, he flew me over on Friday night. I played, get high. Had women left in the room for me. Party hard, you know, drink red stripe and smoke weed. You know, you don't seem to be jonesing for stuff like that, you know. And then Sunday we played a game and I flew home Monday morning. And, you know, a nice 500, a grand, 750 maybe a paycheck, depending on what how it went. And luckily, things went very well. I, the way I play is just, I'm an heir to help. There's nothing, I don't know, I can't say one. I played like Germany in triangles and mathematics, one, two touch. My brother would just do rainbows and nutmeg and stuff, you know, and that's what he was gifted. He didn't really like trainers. He just, God gave him many gifts. And I had one of, like, man, just. Um, have you ever overdosed? No, fortunately. I was hit by a car once, not panhandling. And I was like, I woke up looking at the ceiling. I'm like, where am I? They're like, you were hit by a car. I'm like, no way. And it was just walking across the street. I had some food. And it was like to go one way along the tracks, there's no people. So I went sort of back towards Biscayne. And then it was late at night. I'm wearing dark clothes. And 
I know I looked, it's sort of natural, and you know, to look, you know, and it was by the railroad track, so I could see the lights. It's one where it's like six feet. You can see the lights coming, but apparently this guy came around the corner, and I was told, you know, this and that. But, so you welcome you know, some people like, yeah, we used to like hit a puddle and flood someone on bus man. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I've done that and stalled, you know, where it's like, oh my God, I'm dead man. You know, and I think the guy wanted to scare me, and yet he bumped me, you know, and I was told I'd try to get up and then he crumbled, you know. I don't recall. So, but when, when you woke up, you were in the hospital or? Yes. Oh, okay. And my eye had some problems. It was like 90 grand for three days. And they wanted to work on my knee and I'm like, uh, you open? Yeah, okay, I'll be there in a little bit. And I, you know, they're like, you can't leave. I'm like, I'm out of here, you know. You like, left to, so you left because you wanted to get high? Correct. Uh, my eye was like, they went in there and did a lot of, you know, Baskin Palmer or whatever. You know, it cost a lot of money, apparently. But it was stitched like a football. And then I had my schmock on and I'm at the smoke house, you know. And actually they went up through my mouth, I think, with some instruments. So I had like a no vacuum when I inhaled. I'm like, what's going on here? You know, I'm like, I'm not, you know, like a leak. Let's say the pipe is cracked. You know, it won't inhale as well as a sealed vacuum. So I'm like, I had to go like this sort of because I had a hole in my mouth that, you know, hadn't sealed, I guess. Wow. Yeah, you know, like, amazing. You know? Like I'd say, as thick as your threads there on your yeah. microphone. Very thin, you know. And why do you stay, because I think I've actually seen you before, uh, around 79. It's just, I don't know, my dad says I'm like a homing pigeon. You know, I'd be up in Hollywood, they sold the home insurers, and, you know, kick back, all the kids were grown. And it was like the four corners, I think, of John Dean Smith's basketball. You know, the four lights, of, it was just my environment where I'm comfortable, because, I don't know. And I only ask because I know, at least, like, the past interviews I've done have been in, like, an Overtown. Uh -huh. Obviously, that's where you can get a lot of drugs. True. No, and now it's, like, South Beach in the 80s, early on. You know, I was, the construction after soccer was like, wow, what teamwork to put these things together. And now I got in there, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? It's just insanity. And then nobody really wants to. I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, call me. Where I was eager, and give me the tool. And, you know, they were like, I want the boy. Because I just was, I don't know, I'm pretty radical. People are like, man, you must have been as insane as kid. And I'm like, actually, I, you could talk to my friend. I was, you know, I didn't speak unless spoken to, you know. Because my mom ran a tight ship. And, and that's where I learned these things. And it's just inherent, you know, like nur nature and nurture. You know, like, yeah. friendship. You don't, you know, born with hitting a woman and beating her up. I don't know. It's just, it's pretty, you know, I've changed immensely. My moral fiber is just depleted. But yeah. Well, I think that would happen to anyone doing what you're doing. Of course. Um, yeah, because I'm deceiving. I remember the first time I made a sign and I'm like, please help me get to my dad's funeral in Hollywood, and they were like, California? I'm like, yeah. But yet, it was reality, it was true. And the first car pulled up, he goes, why are you lying to me? When every day I lie to people, you know. But, you know, so you really I, were trying to get to his funeral? Yeah, you know, and I, my friends came by it, and were like, you ready? I'm like, no, you know. So I, you didn't go? I didn't go, you know. I, I missed, it. yeah. You know, I missed my mother. But she was angry with me for 12 years. She didn't speak to me because she was like, so angry. She was black and white, my dad's all shades of gray. You know, he'd come down here and be like, hey, you wanna go to lunch? Not about, what the hell, take a shower, you know, get a life. It's just positive reinforcement always. I don't know, it's just lead, just impeccable value. I mean, yeah, you can't really force someone in your position. They have to like really want it. Yeah, and moments I will, and then three days later, I rested and I'm, you know, and I'm immortal, you know, it's like, I'm not immoral and I'm more and more, you know, I can't burn the candle with two ends where I used to. Do you think you'll ever come to a time where you feel like you've had enough? I have those moments, yes, but then, you know, I'll, they don't, to maintain it, it's, I don't know, it's the same getting high, you know, if I put that effort into staying clean, things have gone very well in the short times I have, you know, and people are like, Pursue it, you know, whatever it may be. But 
all of my heart, even though it's not the correct change. See, I came back from Chapel Hill and then in 84 through 90, you know, and then I went to Jamaica. Actually, that time, he, the AD was like, listen, are you going to coach or play? Because I would leave and the kids would, you know, luckily I had some good parents that were helpful, you know, and they're like, and one time the athletic director was a different one. He's like, listen, I was using older kids because at 13 and 14, you know, they're into other things, you know, they experience those years. And uh, basically, I had some 13 year olds and it was under 12. And it was under 14 and I had some 15 year olds. Why? So I could feel the team. Even the young kids would be like, can I play this week? And I'd have some eight, nine year olds. And then a kid got in a fight, got in a keepers game. He's like, where's the card? Because they, they card all the players and then they give them back to the coach. And then he's like, I need that card because he has to sit out a week. And I'm like, oh, this is him. He's like, no, that's not him. I go, oh, oh, my bad. Here, this is him. And he's like, that ain't him. You know, and I totally, you know, done things, which the athletic director was like, whatever, you know, we'll feel the team. It's not like we were uh, the Lakers or anything. Yeah, yeah. We weren't like blowing people away. You know, we could barely survive. And the kids, they were just young delinquents, you know, I guess, like their coach, an older delinquent. You know. Anyway, I got it wrong. Okay. Hey, thanks. And I don't know. Yeah, thank I'll you. I'll have to watch it. Thank you for talking to me. And uh, no, really it's a pleasure. It.